Hello, and welcome to another episode of Blitzing with the Breeze. I'm Tristan. I'm Nate. And it is Super Bowl week, so today we're going to be making our Super Bowl predictions. The two teams are the San Francisco 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs. They will be playing in Las Vegas for the right to be crowned Super Bowl champion. So we'll go ahead and break down these teams very quickly. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with the 49ers. I've stated previously, this is basically a Madden team. It's a Madden Ultimate team. They can attack teams in so many different ways. They are elite after the catch. They can attack over the middle of the field better than just about anybody. But the question I do want to ask is, what is your overall opinion on quarterback Brock Purdy? Honestly, I think Brock Purdy does his job. He elevates the team, doesn't bring him down. I mean, elevation might be a little bit of a stretch, but he does make this team better. As you look at this team with Jimmy Garoppolo, they weren't able to fully did it, do it. And last time they did, it was against the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Didn't work out. Um, I think Purdy's a better quarterback than Garoppolo, and I think Purdy, you know, he's doing he does his job just well. You know, he has some throws that he has that are bailed out, but at the end of the day, you know, part of playing quarterback is taking those risks. So I appreciate him for just at least trying at times. Yeah, my overall opinion on Brock Purdy is I think he's fine. I think this is a good situation for him. He does his job to the best of his ability, and at the end of the day, he's got the Niners where they were destined to be, the Super Bowl. Um, they've been trying to get here for multiple years. They've had the talent to get there for multiple years, and they're finally there. Um, I do want to touch on the defense because it's pretty well known that their front seven is elite. But there's one thing that's been a little bit suspect, and that is their run defense. Yeah. I don't know why either. Um, I know they changed defensive coordinators from Steve. They changed from D'Amico Ryan to Steve Wilkes. Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's had anything to do with it really, but they have not been nearly as good at defending the run. Yeah, I mean, both coordinators are both attacking defensive coordinators. They like to blitz. They like to bring stunts. They like to bring loops and twists, you know, really be uh, creative with their defensive line and linebacker usage. But I think Steve Wilkes, he kind of values pass rush a little bit more than the run game. You know, he will rather put Fred Warner on, like, an outside blitz and throw him right in the middle. I mean, at the same time, though, Steve Wilkes is a good defensive coordinator. He was a head coach because of his ability in Arizona. Um, but I think that, you know, also you just got to look at personnel as well. You know, their defensive interior is not as strong. Correct me if I'm wrong, but at one point they had Eric Armstead and DeForest Buckner and Javon Kinlaw and all these guys, and now they don't have DeForest Buckner. Yeah. Eric Armstead, I believe, is on a different team. Yeah, he's so on the I Jets. believe they had Armstead and DeForest Buckner when they went to the Super Bowl originally, and I believe DeForest Buckner went to the Colts right after. Yeah. And then they drafted Kinlaw, I think. To replace him yeah, with the same I pick. Yeah, a year or two after. And Kinlaw has not worked out whatsoever. Oh, absolutely he's, not. You know, as someone who's dra- whose team drafted Jerry Tillery, I understand the pain and the frustration. I would argue Kinlaw is much better. But, mm-hmm. you know, with that deep de- defensive line, you'd think they would have some ability to play make against the run. But to be fair, they did play the Lions, a very, very good running team. Very. And I yeah. think that at the end of the day, I mean, if you were just giving up the run, you might be okay. You know, if you can stop the pass – you know, control the ball, control the clock, you're going to end up probably winning. Because, you know, if they're playing from behind and they can only run the ball, it's not going to work out for them. The last question I want to ask is, I think Cal Shanahan is one of the best offensive minds in NFL history. Obviously, his dad, Mike Shanahan, was one of the most well-known coaches, multiple-time Super Bowl winner. Yeah. What is Kyle Shanahan's legacy? Because in the Super Bowl, he's blown the 20-10 to lead, and he also has the infamous 28-3 to lead. Yeah, I mean, is it him getting uh, too conservative during his time, you know, ahead? Uh, does he learn from his mistakes? We'll see. I think Kyle Shanahan is a very uh, great coach to show how much you can evolve as a coordinator and, and as a play caller and then eventually into a head coach. I think Shanahan's a great play, uh, play caller, great head coach. I do I do have concerns about his uh, play calling becoming conservative in the later halves of games, but... His legacy as a whole, if he can win the Super Bowl, I think he's starting to get put into this category of there's these coaches that you just respect, guys like Mike Tomlin. I think he's close. He's a better coach than Mike Tomlin right now, but in overall legacy standings, I think he's going to get into that tier of Mike Tomlin, you know, those like second level coach coaches like Bill Cowher and stuff like that, like guys who are not quite on the Bill Belichick, you know, Bill Parcells level, but like one step below that. If he keeps, if he wins the Super Bowl and keeps up the good work, you know, that he's done so far. Yeah, no question. I think Kyle Shanahan, I mean, if he wasn't on the 49ers, I think this team would look not completely different, but they definitely look different. There's so yeah. many things he can do uh, with this offensive play calling that really confuses the opposing defense. 
Next, we have the Kansas City Chiefs. I don't know how they're here. I really don't. I mean, a question I have to ask is Patrick Mahomes on his way to being the greatest quarterback in history? Um, It's a tough question to, to answer. Even he doesn't believe so. Um, I do think that Mahomes is a great quarterback. He's very talented. I think he might follow in the Aaron Rodgers' footsteps of being one of the most talented quarterbacks of all time who has shown to be one of the greatest as well. But I don't think anyone's ever going to beat Tom Brady. I mean, uh, if anyone has a chance, it is Mahomes. I think he's the only one that has a chance. But, you know, I don't like thinking of quarterback wins and Super Bowls to use for someone's legacy. But when you are in contention for greatest of all time and you have to differentiate between minuscule things, I think a decent thing to put up is Super Bowls. And seven Super Bowl rings, uh, Mahomes is one? Uh, he has two. He has two? Okay. Yeah. You know, it's going to be tough. It's definitely going to be tough for him to get there. Uh, but it depends how long he plays. You know, Mahomes' yeah. play style might not last as long. You know, you lose arm strength. He can't do the crazy things. He loses agility. He loses mobility. Yeah. You know, he's going to have to evolve his game into more of a check down type of guy like Brady was like, during his career. And there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, I think Mahomes is on his way. Do I think he'll, you know, end up finishing? We'll see. Yeah, I think it's one of those things that kind of reminds me a lot of the Jordan-LeBron debate. Yeah. Like, I, I do worry that Patrick Mahomes' standards is going to be higher than anybody else in history. Because, remember, Tom Brady set the standard. Yeah. He set the standard on what you need to do. Patrick Mahomes, in a way, has to surpass that. Yeah. To be able to be the greatest. And I think it's going to be a little bit like the Jordan-LeBron debate, where LeBron, I don't know if any athlete in the world has more pressure on him than LeBron James. Yeah. I mean... You could argue other players, but I think LeBron James, when you look at the media attention, I think a lot of that could happen with Patrick Mahomes. Um, But we'll go ahead and move on to the rest of the Chiefs. Um, Travis Kelsey, I mean, had a very quiet regular season. He has not had a quiet playoffs. He's, what, he catch like nine balls in the first half against the Ravens. He's dominating, of course, when when it matters most, you know. But, uh uh, it's it's a tough situation for the 49ers to have to cover Kelsey when he's hot, when he's elite mm-hmm. right now. Um, we'll see, you know, what happens with Fred Warner and Drake Greenlaw and these type of guys against Kelsey. I think they have a decent chance. But if you put them on to Sean Gibson or, like, I don't even know if he's in the lead, Logan Ryan, like these old aging safeties, they're going to be in some trouble. Travis Kelsey is honestly a mismatch for just about anybody. Fred Warner might be the only one. <laughs> He's one of the few that yeah. I think has a chance. Um, so we'll go ahead and go to the other side. One of the matchups I think the 49ers will have an advantage is the fact that the Chiefs have not defended the run great in the postseason. And I don't think the 49ers have a problem running it with potential MVP, potential offensive player of the year, Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, I mean, McCaffrey deserves it more than anyone else. Um, I think he had over 2,000 scrimmage yards you know, through the air and on the ground. McCaffrey... In that offensive line, if you just run behind Trent Williams 10 times a game, you're going to be all right. Um, yeah, I feel like even I can pick up a yard or two if I'm behind Trent Williams. <laughs> we'll I, see, I'd though. probably pull my hamstring if yeah, I Yeah, me too, <laughs> though. <laughs> I'll be out for the rest of the year. But I think McCaffrey against this Chiefs run defense is uh, is going to be an interesting matchup because the Chiefs run defense on paper should be pretty solid. Um, their linebacker linebacking core is really, really good against the run. You know, you got Nick Bolin. He's been great. Uh, Leo Chanel, who's kind of coming onto the scene. Drew Tranquil. Mm-hmm. You know, former Charger. Uh, uh, I hope, you know, I hope he gets a ring, but also I can't root for the Chiefs. But those three linebackers in general are very, very good linebackers against the run. They're very much downhill linebackers. Drew Tranquil has a little bit more coverage ability than the two, in my opinion. But still, he's more more so known as a downhill linebacker. And their defensive line, I mean, Chris Jones, you can't sleep on. He's he's a menacing in the pass and the run. Especially because I don't think the Niners' offensive line outside of Trent Williams is great. Yeah. I mean, they have some, you know, guys who are up and coming, Spencer Burford and stuff. But, I mean, it's still Chris Jones. I, I'm kind of wondering when is Chris Jones going to leave and he'll go to a different team and all that fun stuff. But, you know, we'll get into that after the Super Bowl. I don't know if that's going to happen, buddy. Uh, I, hope. I think he's going to be terrorizing the Chargers two times a year for a long time. See, like Zion, I mean, Zion Johnson will lock him down for 90% of the game, then just give up two sacks randomly. And yeah. I'm like, well, now you had a bad game. I mean, you never know because the Chiefs still have to pay, like, a Creed Humphrey. They're probably, they're Trey already, Smith. Yeah, they already restructured Mahomes' contract. So, But the Chiefs always find a way. Makes they no sense to me. It really doesn't. I don't know how they're here because I did, did not like the receiving core. I don't love the offensive tackles. 
We've talked about Jawan Taylor a few oh times on this. God. Yeah. <laughs> uh, him against Nick Bosa might be an issue. Yeah, I mean, even with Chase Young not showing effort on every play, I, I think that was overblown. I think Chase Young was fine. I'm not a big Chase Young fan, but he's still a very talented, very good no edge rusher. I think he's on a mercenary deal, He'll probably leave and get you know get mm-hmm. a comp pick. But I think uh, Jawan Taylor, and who's on the left side right now? I think it's Donovan Smith. Donovan Smith. Yeah. Because I know it's kind of been a rotate, like they've been rotating tackles like all year. Yeah. Um, it's not that's they had Wanya Morris sure. at one point. I think yeah. they even might have even had Darian Kennard. Like they had these just guys who just like they're hoping for the best and. Mm-hmm. You know, Donovan Smith, last time he played in the Super Bowl, was not great, you know, with the Bucks. So, we'll see what happens there. I think the Chiefs are going to have Mahomes running for his life once again. But at the end of the day, betting against Patrick Mahomes is not always the wisest decision. I'm going to go ahead and ask you, who do you think is going to win the Super Bowl? Oh, man, I, you know, I think who I think is going to win and who will win might be a little different. Um mm-hmm. I, I'm going to have to take the Niners here. Their team is so much more well-rounded. Then again, it's super hard to bet against Andy Reid and Mahomes mm-hmm. and Kelsey at, clicking at the right time. But, you know, you look at this Niners defense, you look at this Niners offense, there's really no holes on this team. Mm-hmm. They don't, you know, make it. It's There's got to be something wrong. There's got to be like a 28-3 to three blown lead again. There's got to be something, mm-hmm. a crazy storyline to talk about. So that said, I'm going to take the 49ers or the Chiefs, and my score prediction will be, 31-27, 49ers. Uh, I've been told to not bet against Patrick Mahomes. The one time I did is like the one prediction I have wrong since <laughs> we've been doing these predictions podcasts. So I'm willing to be wrong again, but I'm picking the Chiefs. Uh, 35 to 30. I think it could easily swap. I think the Niners as a team are better. I just yeah. think when you talk about the Chiefs, they have the best player in the league. They have the best tight end in the league. They might have the best coach in the league. That could be debatable. Yeah. But I just think those are three positions that they are better than the 49ers, and those are the three positions that they've been able to use and beat other teams. So I'm going to pick the Chiefs. I'm not fully confident on it, but that's going to yeah, be hard I, to pick. I mean, it, you know, it's going to be a tough game. It's going to be a fun game. I'm not very happy with the outcome. I wish it was Lions-Ravens, but, you know, yeah, I will watch I the Super Bowl because I'm a, a football fanatic and I will enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Um, unless the Chiefs win. But, uh, you know, I'm excited for this offseason to kick off. So I hope you guys will tune in for our offseason episodes. Um, but as for the regular season, it's our last episode. Yeah. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy this far. Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed our predictions. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to our NFC quarterback rankings. And we'll see you there. <laughs> 